Welcome back. Thank you for clicking on today's video. Today we're going to have a quick summary or reminder or review, whatever you want to think, on the topic that we've just covered, which is the analysis of categorical data. So let's start from the beginning. We talked about how this whole chapter was descriptive statistics, which remember means that we're only describing. This was not inferential statistics, that's further units. And we talked about how descriptive statistics are numeric summaries and graphical displays. So for this categorical data, we talked about three different numeric summaries. We talked about frequencies, which remember is the count or how many are in a group. So that would always be a whole number. Then we talked about using that frequency to calculate what's called a relative frequency. And it's called that because it's the count or the frequency relative to the total. So that can be represented either as a fraction or you can calculate that fraction into a decimal value. And those always have to be between zero and one. And then we talked about how to utilize the relative frequency, multiplying it by 100 to get our percentages, which also have to be between zero and 100%. So then we moved into some graphical displays for categorical data. We talked about the bar graph, which can represent a frequency on the y-axis, a relative frequency, or a percentage. And we talked about how the height of the bars tells you the number of individuals or trees or units, whatever it is you're looking at, um, that is in each group. And we talked about in the bar graph uh, scenario that it is not a histogram and we can recognize that because the x-axis for a bar graph is categories whereas the x-axis for a histogram is a number line so do not confuse those things we really emphasize that we then looked at uh, pie graphs and how those are set up to show the percent or proportion of um, the group that's represented in a total of a hundred percent so of the pie those are best represented as percentages because it's just the easiest for your reader to digest. And then we compared a bar graph and a pie graph and saw that they're representing the same data. It's just a pie graph represents the amount based on the size of the slice, whereas a bar graph represents the amount with its height. So then we looked at some clustered bar graphs, which remember are for two categorical variables where the x-axis or the values that are represented in the bars are going to be your response variable and the different color or pattern is going to be the explanatory variable. Now we did discuss explanatory and response and remember that the explanatory variable is doing the explaining so it's causing change in the response variable. We then also looked at situations where we had the bivariate data so two variables on one uh, observation and we showed how to represent that in what's called a two-way table or sometimes referred to as a contingency table and we emphasize the fact that a two-way table does not mean there's only two rows and two columns that's two by two we talked about how it's called a two-way table because it's representing two variables and in that situation we said that the appropriate way to set up a two-way table is to have the explanatory variable being represented in the rows, and then the response variable is represented in the columns. Then within those two-way tables, we talked about how to set them up, uh, where the observed counts were, which remembers what you observe in the data and is represented in each of the cells. Then we talked about the joint distribution and how to calculate relative frequencies, which remember takes those observed counts and divides by the total for the table or the sample size, which is located in the bottom right hand corner. And then we talked about the conditional distribution, which remember is different because you're putting a condition on your relative frequency that you're calculating. And for what we're doing, we said that the appropriate condition would be whatever the explanatory variable is, so what's in the rows. And in those situations, that relative frequency is calculated by taking the denominator as the row total. So you still use that observed count as your numerator, but then you're dividing by the row total instead of the total for the whole table, which is how it differs from the joint distribution. And then we talked about how to um, look at categorical data when it has a geographical component. So I showed you some 
different maps and how categorical data can be represented on a map. Uh, we also talked about lurking variables and how detrimental those can be. So with the lurking variables, remember that another word for it is confounding. So essentially, it, it messes up your ability to have a clear view of the relationship between the explanatory and response variable. Now, the textbook talks about some examples of lurking variables and what they can do, and that was referred to as the Simpsons paradox, uh, where you have a relationship, but you're not seeing the actual relationship because that lurking variable is masking it. And that is it. Those are all of the things that we discussed. If I went through them too quickly, make sure you go back and review the actual videos that go into more depth. Otherwise, I will see you in future videos where we will start our unit on the analysis of one quantitative variable. See you there.